Good morning traders. Welcome to the Phoenix Blue morning update for Wednesday the 10th of March. This morning we're going to be looking at the uh, European Central Bank, uh, the bank for the Eurozone. Um, they have a rate announcement and press conference today and we'll be looking specifically at the market's expectation versus what's actually delivered. Before we do that we'll uh, go over to the Asian markets and the news for the day. Um, I've summarised the Asian markets onto one screen. Um, in recent weeks, things have been quite quiet here, but we do need to have a daily eye on these markets. Here we've got the US dollar Chinese one exchange rate. Um, again, somewhat within it's been like the last couple of weeks within a range. Um, the Shanghai composite, the composite of the Chinese uh, equities markets, a very much a, a stationary day on the 2015 lows. Uh, however, in, over on the Nikkei in Japan, the equities there, we had a stronger day, possibly on the back of uh, a bounce, of the recent bounce in the price of crude oil. Okay, over to the news. Uh, look back to yesterday, we had some positive figures um, on manufacturing production on the pound. That was, however, somewhat uh, unrecognized because the pound is so much dominated by the upcoming Brexit vote in June and I've said on a number of occasions our bias is purely short on that currency until such time as, as the result uh, is announced for the vote. Uh, one of the big ones yesterday, the Canadian uh, Bank of Canada rate statement unchanged um, as expectation the markets were expecting it to remain static. There's a new government in Canada. Their uh, first budget is due before the uh, next announcement. So the next announcement where might be when we might see some action. Uh, crude oil inventories from the States, we saw much more reasonable figures than we'd had last week um, and gave a little bit of impetus to oil on that basis. Then eight o'clock last night, the uh, cash rate for New Zealand dollar from the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand. We had a reduction, somewhat of a surprise reduction. This is the fifth reduction since June of last year. The reduction from uh, 2.75 to 2.50 only happened in December. So that came as a bit of a surprise to the market. And we'll, be, we'll have a quick look at the uh, New Zealand dollar chart to see what the result, uh, the immediate result of that announcement was. Uh, overnight, we've had the CPI from China coming in at a positive 2.3. Uh, not a huge influence, as we can see on the markets, that particular one. The big one for today is the ECB, or, or the Euro minimum bid rate, followed by Mario Draghi and the ECB press conference. That's what we'll be watching out for. We'll be talking more about that in a second, in terms of what the expectation from the markets is. Uh, we have also left on here for next week, Wednesday next week, the FOMC, because these two together um, quite possibly will determine the what the markets are going to be doing over the next two to three months. That's the level of significance of those. So over to the euro and the announce or the announcement today i've highlighted here the december announcement as being a classic example where the markets expected and the ecb didn't deliver sufficiently the markets expected a rate cut potentially they got an increase in the time scale an extension in the time scale of quantitative easing the the net result was the opposite of what the ECB intended, because as you can see by this single day bar here, the euro rocketed on the back of that. The market had built in uh, an expectation. When that expectation wasn't met, we get a movement that, uh, on the chart, which is a reverse of what, in isolation, we might expect. The reason to highlight this today is the expectation is from the ECB today is both a rate drop and or or possibly and uh, an extension in QE. Currently, the interest rate or the level that of interest is the commercial bank deposit rate, which is at minus 0.3%. The markets, I believe, will expect a minimum of a reduction to minus 0.4. 
uh, um, and potentially even minus 0 0.5. On the quantitative easing side, the monthly budget for buying bonds, etc., is currently 60 billion, which was per month, which was extended through to the end of March 17. Uh, in this announcement we discussed there, uh, reading what the market expectation is today, is the market may be expecting an increase in that up towards even 80 billion a month, uh, an increase in the the again the extension beyond March 2017 and possibly an announcement that they will buy higher risk assets at the moment they're only buying a1 assets they may start looking at assets from uh, that are the countries in southern Europe Italy Spain etc are currently holding which are of a lower quality so the net result of that is the market has a big expectation the ECB and Mario Draghi have a lot to deliver on if they don't deliver we could see this type of move again which is not what they intend um, but we'll only see that as it plays out this is one of the risks if you decide to trade that news announcement or you're in the trade around that news or you're in the euro around that news announcement this is the unpredictability um, despite what the expectation is, if the expectation is not met, you, you, you risk being whipsawed straight out of your trade. Okay, over to other things, the dollar index. Yesterday, um, we were bouncing around below this 97.50 level, which I see as critical in uh, what I call this yellow zone, which is a neutral zone. Uh, and until we get a breakout from that, um, I don't see dollar strength. We may see that come if the announcement from the ECB today is sufficiently strong and the market likes it. Uh, the euro will drop and inevitably the dollar will rise and we'll be back into a dollar strength scenario. This is the uh, New Zealand dollar chart. Just highlighting here the surprise announcement from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, that quarter point rate drop. Uh, Price had been around this level here, had been looking up through the day. Uh, we actually had an order in place on these highs here. As you can see, that's cancelled now. But on the announcement at 8 o'clock, price just dropped. Um, and we'll now be looking for an opportunity for a pullback to get into this market because our bias is firmly short this market again. A trade we are in is the Aussie. Uh, it spiked up into our uh, trading our entry at this point yesterday fell away aided by overnight i believe by the um, new zealand announcement uh, we have our first target down at this level and um, we may revise this this morning uh, this level here that's marked with a dotted line is a profitable uh, level um, we may decide to take half our profits at that point and move our stop to break even we may move our stop to break even and uh, just let the trade ride down to this um, level here where our original T1 target is. Uh, but that will depend on some conversations this morning about how we feel the day is going to go once the markets have had a chance to settle in. Um, over on the pound, another trade that we're in. We took uh, a short trade from this bar here. We were very nearly stopped out. There was a spike through there. We're in there. We've had we've had profits off the table. Our stops now at break even. We're looking for a breakdown before we look to add into that trade. Over on gold, another trade that we took yesterday. Um, this is an interesting one because it, it does show some of our philosophy uh, about how we trade. We identified a very strong level through here. At the moment, you can only see the stop uh, because the stop is on top of the entry. Um, we've taken profits and our stop is at break even. But in this little insert here, you can see what we were basically trading apart from the level was the breakout and retest of this triangle. Um, we got a very strong rep response at this point here. Price shot through. At this point, we've hit our T1. We've taken profits. We've moved our stop to break even. How can we do this? Well, we're very, we identify the very strongest levels. Because we identify the strongest levels, we can use very small stops. 
when then we can basically trade a reaction from the strong level, get our stop to break even. We're now risk free in a trade, so uh, so we have the opportunity to either take the move if it does bounce, but more importantly, even if this this level fails, we'll have still made profits. So, but it's about getting that stop to break even quickly by identifying these key levels where the big players, the banks and the institutions buy and sell because you will always get a reaction at those levels. So we look to capture the reaction, take a small profit, then what happens is somewhat irrelevant because if, if in theory, if we could do that every time and it was a 50-50 win-lose, um, we would win 50% of the time and we'd break even the other 50% of the time. Okay, that's a bit extreme. That's not going to happen because we're not always going to get to our T1 target. But simply because we use a very tight stop, we have the opportunity to to take money off the table, get the stop to break even, get our risk off the table, and any trade with risk off the table is a free trade. Okay, um, Coco, just an update on where we are on this trade. We took uh, the trade based on a very significant commitment of traders, extreme signal and extreme bottom signal here. Um, we've had money off the table, stop to break even. Um, we're up at a level now. We're looking for that level to be broken um, we'll look for a retest to add in. Um, our targets are these highs up here. Um, the, through the period here, the uh, cot, the commitment of traders have been giving us the right signals that this trade is moving. It's going in the right direction and um, in all probability will reach towards these levels up here. Okay, guys, that's uh, that covers everything I've got to talk about today. Um, if you want to know more about how we trade, you want to see about how we can potentially improve your trading or make your existing results more profitable, please simply email us at info at phoenixblue.co.uk. Um, you can have a chat with us. You can come in and, and see us and have a, an extended meeting or whatever. That's all without commitment. We'll show you exactly what we do, how we do it. And um, you can make your own judgment at that point. But please don't hesitate to email us at info at phoenixblue.co.uk. OK, um, well, that's it till the morning. Uh, I look forward to speaking to you then. Take care.